Roland Martin. You probably say, come on, give me a break. Move on, guys. Brought to you by General Motors. The all-new 2014 Chevrolet Impala, an enduring icon. Forged at the crossroads where classic meets contemporary. Find new roads. Roland Martin, good morning. Good morning, Tom. Similar to Jay, uh, just hundreds of thousands of people, millions of people across the country, uh, angry, uh, upset, you name it, as related to the decision uh, involving George Zimmerman in the uh, murder of Trayvon Martin. But clearly, uh, there uh, is no one who is feeling this decision more than his father, Tracy Martin, than his mother, Sabrina Fulton. And Sabrina joins us right now, along with attorney Ben Crump. Uh, Sabrina, first off, uh, good morning. Um, You have been doing the rounds of interviews across the country. It's been almost a week from the decision. Um, how How do you feel even today? Good morning. Um, I feel energized. I feel like there's work to do. I feel that the people, the supporters, are encouraging me to keep fighting. So I'm ready to fight. Sabrina, I've said that Trayvon could serve uh, as this generation's Emmett Till in terms of being a catalyst for change in terms of moving um, the next generation to fight social justice. Your thoughts about that? I think it is. I think uh, we feel connected to, uh, I think other people feel connected to this case, and they want to do something. Um, Sometimes you get to a point where you just can't take it anymore, and I think this is the actual case where they just can't take it anymore. They just can't take the injustice they've been seeing um, in the court systems with the justice system. They just can't take it anymore, and they want their voices to be heard, and I 100% support that. When you watch interviews, when you watch folks on television um, who are who in death attacking your son, calling him a thug, uh, questioning his upbringing, and things along those lines, do you tune it out? Does it make you angry? Uh, uh, or, or, or do you simply say, I just got to pray for such ignorance? I have to pray for that. I have to pray for them because they don't know Trayvon. And the thing is, when you don't know somebody, you make up stuff. You want them to be the bad guy to justify what has happened. But that still won't justify it because George Zimmerman has Trayvon's innocent blood on his hands. Sabrina, um, clearly the DOJ is investigating this, potentially looking at uh, violations of civil rights uh, of Trayvon Martin. Uh, you also have the potential for a civil suit. Ben Crump, you can step in as well. Has it? Uh, are you looking? Are you looking at the civil suit? And does the fact that the jury instructions uh, had stand your ground in them uh, make it even more difficult for you to pursue civil a civil suit against George Zimmerman? Uh, we're certainly looking at all our legal options, Roland, and certainly the stand your ground law may be an impediment to us going forward, but that is going to be a court decision, and we're going to talk about that with you and Tom Rowland because there are some things we as a community need to try to do to push that. Uh, But right now we're focused still on holding the killer accountable, and we want the Department of Justice to answer the issue that we are framing. Can private citizens profile our children and follow them, confront them, and not be held accountable because not even the United States Supreme Court will allow police officers to profile individuals based on a racial class. Sabrina, Ms. Fulton, how did you feel when you heard the interview of uh, Jura B-37 when, when, she, when she said that she felt that George Zimmerman's heart was in the right place? And George, not just and, Zimmerman. And that, yeah, just... that's George. How did that make you feel? Uh, it just shows me that there is some disconnect. They did not see Trayvon as a teenager. They they saw him as something else. They did not see him as minding his own business. It, it seems to me like they took everything, and like she said, George, uh, 
everything that George said, and they took it as a gospel truth. Well, we all know that if you had shot and killed somebody, you're going to say anything that you have to say to try to get out of the mess that you got yourself into. And and I feel that that our kids have to be careful now because now we have to have the conversation with our kids about do you walk fast, do you walk slow, do you even walk, walk at all to the store to get a drink and some candy. Mm. Sabrina, still lots of conversation for many people as it relates to our kids and hoodies and things along those lines. And, and, and i got to ask you, with all of this, would you tell your surviving son, would you tell, if you could do it all over again, would you tell Trayvon, people are making judgments about you, you got to change what you wear? What I would tell my my son now, and if I had been given the opportunity to tr- tell Trayvon anything, um, he definitely would not have been in Sanford because I don't think in Miami he would have been profiled. Um, it, it, it's hard for me right now because everything is still so fresh. Mm-hmm. But I want him, I want them to to be able to walk down the street. But I don't want them to be afraid that somebody's going to see them as a target. Somebody may see them as a burglar, and and he was no burglar. Trayvon was no burglar, and neither is Javaris. They're not burglars. They, they're not looking for trouble. They're just not those type of kids. And what I would tell them is to be safe. Be safe and just try to make it back home as, as quickly as, as you can and as safely as you can because you don't know what the other person's intentions are. You have a lot of mothers and fathers out there who have had to have some difficult conversations uh, with their children uh, in the wake of this verdict. Um, what would you tell those parents who said, now I live in fear to even send my kids to the store just to get some candy? That we need to definitely change these laws. We, we can't have a law on the books that says that it's all right for you to own a gun, it's all right for you to follow somebody in the vehicle, follow somebody on foot, chase them, pretty much chase them, and get into a fight with them, shoot and kill them, and say you were standing your ground. That's another thing that we're working on is the Trayvon Martin Amendment that says you cannot do those things. But right now, as of now, we have those uh, uh, laws on the books, and it's, it's an awful, it's an awful law for us right now. How do we feel? Yeah, yeah, we encourage people to visit the Trayvon Martin Foundation, uh, TrayvonMartin.org, where we talk about those things. Because as Sabrina and Tracy have said all along, they can't bring Trayvon back. So right now they're trying to make sure this doesn't happen to your child. We also need folks to go to the website to also give as well because uh, it takes uh, money to fund uh, these initiatives. So that's a part of it as well. Um, Sabrina Fulton, you and Tracy, Certainly profiles in courage. Uh, we thank you so much. Uh, you're enduring a significant amount of pain, but tr- but there are lots of people who are standing tall with you. Thank you so much. Are and, you going to we'll are, see you at a family reunion with yes. us? Of course I'll be there. Oh, God bless you. That way you. I can let my hair down. There I'm you go. forward to letting my hair down. Oh, Amen. good, good, Amen. good. Amen. Are you going to participate in any of the uh, marches tomorrow? Yes, I'm actually here in New York. Um, we we can we could not decide which one we was gonna go to. So Tracy and I are gonna split up. He's gonna go to the one in Miami, and I'm gonna go to the one here in New York. Yeah, I'll be at the one in Miami too. All right. Well, thank okay. you, uh, Tom and Silver and Jay and Roland. More than you know. I appreciate it, Sabrina. Keep fighting the good Dan, fight. Thanks a lot.